So I think what Terry brought was humility, that he was not coming saying, I am God's plan for Birmingham. Um, he came with the generosity of wanting to work um, wherever uh, he could with others and with a big vision to reach the lost. And I've always been drawn to Terry because of his passionate heart for the lost. glad that you guys both took your time out today. Neil and Terry from Birmingham, UK. The reason that we're meeting today is because we desire to see movements of the gospel throughout the cities of Europe. And to that end, we desire to work broadly around the gospel to see our cities transformed by the gospel. Specifically, we're meeting today because we want to help foreign church planners or missionaries and local church planners and leaders in the cities of Europe to form meaningful partnerships around the gospel. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Okay, Neil, I'll let you go first. Thank you. Always the gen gentleman, Terry. Thank you. Um, so my name is Neil Powell. I live here in Birmingham, the city in which I was raised, um, but I actually came to faith in London as a college student. Moved back here to work for the InterVarsity, the student movement, for a number of years, and then became an accidental and reluctant church planter. 20 years ago, so we celebrate our 20th birthday as a church in September of this year, and then connected with City to City about 15 years ago, and really through the vision and values of City to City, those which are sort of expressed and outlined now in Centre Church, really got a vision for the city, and a vision to see the movement of the gospel, as you, as you described there, and to realise that if we were going to see that to happen, we would need to plant many churches. So I realised that was something I couldn't do on my own, couldn't do within my own denomination, but reached out to someone I'd never partnered with or worked before, who was a church planting pastor for a, a network called New Frontiers, sort of reformed charismatic grouping. And we formed a partnership back in 2009, where we said, why don't we do more together than we can do on our own? And let's work to see 20 new churches planted or revitalized for the city of Birmingham in 10 years. So 20 churches in 10 years. And I think we kind of could figure our way to thinking how six or seven of those might get done, but there were lots of unknowns. And um, we really felt that the Lord was calling us to this. And we're now in 2019, so we're nine years in. And by God's grace, we've seen 19 of those uh, churches planted. There are so many stories we could tell, we can't do that in this conversation. Um, but partnership has been at the heart of this movement. We're thrilled at those 19, none of them by God's grace, none of them has failed. And we've committed to go again for the next 10 years. And we're thinking now of a further 30 churches for the next 10 years, 20 churches in the first 10 years, a further 30, that would be 50 new churches for our city. And if each of those churches could plant once in their lifetime, that would be a hundred churches for Birmingham. And I think then we begin to think, well, if we could see that happen, we could actually see change. Uh, seeing people one for Christ, seeing the city influenced and shaped by the message of the gospel. Um, Terry Wilbanks, I work with the International Mission Board. Um, for the first nine years in Europe, I was in France, um, Paris and Corsica, um, and then have been in the UK for the past seven years. Um, whenever we moved over here, of course, when we do church planning specifically with um, the under 30s and university age has been my background. Um, got involved, heard about the 2020 um, church planning network and then met Neil through that. So yeah, I have a pretty short story. That's just me. Can you guys tell me about the story of how you've been partnering together in what way and how is that formed in, in stages to a partnership that you have today? Um, I'll just start off as far as when we moved here, I realized the importance of actually working with nationals. Um, for the nine years that we were in France, also in Belgium, we tried to work some with nationals, but not as much as I wanted to. And I really learned that lesson here. Um, and so one of the first things I'm um, getting here to England was to see, um, we just started praying and saying, okay, Lord, where are you working? How can we be involved with that? And what national specifically um, can we partner with? And so for me, the partnering about Neil and I coming together actually just started in prayer. As far as that, we came into it. My wife, Sheila, and I were praying and saying, okay, who do you want us to partner from the very beginning? So I think the mindset, if you're trying to plant many churches to reach a city, you just always looking for opportunity. So I think that's my mindset is where is there a God-given opportunity? We can see a huge gospel need. How is a gospel opportunity presenting itself? And I think it's crucially born out of relationship. 
So the mm. fact that Terry and I were getting to know each other by just gathering at these 2020 forums that happen once a month. Um, someone has said that um, that you can work with people you know, people you like, people you trust. And it just takes time to build those relationships. So I think if Terry had arrived and come into that first meeting and said, I'd like to do this, will you help me to do it? Well, we, we that might have been fine because Terry's an easygoing kind of guy and we, we might have just been fine. But I think what happened was we just we were just in a room where we were building relationship, praying together for the city, seeing ourselves under God as being part of a bigger story and a bigger vision for a city. And then out of that relationship beginning to form, beginning to say, where's the opportunity the partnership here? So I think what Terry brought um, into that room was, um, was humility, that he was not coming saying, I am God's plan for Birmingham. Um, he came with the generosity of wanting to work uh, wherever uh, he could with others and with a big vision to reach the lost. And I've always been drawn to Terry because of his passionate heart for the lost. So as we began to meet and talk about Birmingham, it, it became clear to me that there was opportunity here for collaboration because Terry was going onto the university campus in Aston, meeting students, often students a long way from Christianity and Christian things in a post-Christian European context. And he was talking with them, maybe trying to have coffee, maybe read, meet, read the Bible a little bit, but there was no obvious opportunity for him to be able to say, why don't you come with me to a church that I'm, that, are, that I'm a part of that would be on their doorstep near where those college students were living. And I had always thought I would love to go and reach students on and young professionals in and around that city center community. So really, we saw a gospel need, and I thought, there's no way I could do that on my own. I was overstretched as a pastor, leading a church, two services on a Sunday, to add a third service at a second site to way beyond my capacity. But if Terry and I could maybe come and do this in some way together, um, then I was, up, I was up for it. So there's no doubt about it, five years into a fruitful partnership that Terry and I have had into church planting, there is absolutely no way that would have happened without Terry's presence and an IMB mission partner ready to work alongside us, ready to say, how can I be useful? How can I serve? What would this look like? It really is a, just a lovely story of how something happened that could never have happened without Terry coming to Birmingham and God bringing Terry and Sheila to our city. Many partnerships between local church planners and leaders and foreigners end in disappointment from one or both sides, um, or worse, they end in destruction or they end in conflict. We, see, we have a lot of examples of that as well. So maybe you guys could give us uh, and people watching three tips for considering partnership. Um, I think one thing that I've said before is that is just to be praying and just see where, look and see where God's working. Um, when we first got here, we've been here for seven years. We didn't actually start partnership with this church plan until we were already here for two years. So we're just praying and seeing what God's doing, um, being aware that he is working and then seeing what national people we can connect with. And so as far as looking as a, as a missionary or as a foreigner looking into the culture, I need to realize um, that I don't have it all worked out and that I, that I do have that need for national partners. Um, and that just because I don't understand the culture and understand um, and things aren't exactly the way I want them doesn't mean that it just can't still work out. I think also a key point is to, and I learned this, I think, in Paris, but even more here, is that to hold on to the leadership lightly, um, that it's God's work, it's not mine. So I'm working with Neil. I'm very thankful because he is so connected throughout the city and actually throughout the UK. Um, he knows the culture. He knows the people. He knows so many insights. Um, and so as we're working together in partnership, it's not me saying, okay, this is what it's going to be like, Neil, and, and realize that um, Neil's not in charge either as far as that we're working together, but it's the Lord that's leading us, um, and things change. Um, and I, as, as Neil has already said, communication is just essential throughout the process, um, being able to just not know each other, but also know each other's families. Neil invited um, my wife and kids and I to attend um, the church that he's the pastor of, and we were there for two years. I'm um, talking about, I'm sharing life and talking about um, what our dreams are. 
and what we'd like to see um, before we actually started. So yeah, communication, holding on to leadership lightly, and then just praying would be three things that comes off the top of my head. We do feel that this this collaboration between Terry and myself is part of the bigger story for the city. So we have this forum where both planters and mission partners from a variety of agencies gather together for that monthly meeting. So we're creating a culture where we're learning from one another in terms of our church planting stories and, and what God is doing. And that means that there are people speaking in to our relationship and the project that we're working on. So the fact that Terry's IMB boss is in the room for those monthly gatherings and that he himself is part of a project for a different church plant in the city, I think that gives us um, uh, a strength of, of understanding and a culture whereby we can learn together across these different church planting stories. So I think we're, we're stronger together. And um, the fact that there are people speaking into our project, maybe people who see a dynamic or have just got questions or can coach us through the relationship in those early stages. So the 2020 Planters Forum is a safe place for us to bring mission partners and local church leaders and potential planters into a room to meet one another, to spark, to pray, to talk, to build relationships. And that forum, I think, has been absolutely crucial in terms of the strength of the church planting partnerships across Birmingham. What are some things that you would tell someone seeking to form a new partnership not to do? Well, it's an, a, it's an asymmetric relationship. And I think that, that needs to be understood. So I think what the IMB guys in Birmingham have modeled so well is that their posture is to serve an indigenous church planter and leader and not to take leadership away from that person because they have their own ego or it's a pride issue or they just want to be the guy at the front all of the time. So what I admire in both Terry and others who are serving in that role is their willingness to just encourage and almost push to the front that the church planter and the leader who is the national. Even if they, for example, might be a better preacher, they need that guy to become established and they need to coach him into that role. So a friend of ours has this term, which may be familiar in, in your training and culture of shadow pastoring, which is to walk alongside and to see his role as equipping and enabling that church planter to flourish. And that's posture of both humility and that servant leadership mindset have just been vital. And if there's a if if the planter and the mission partner are competing with one another and egos are clashing, inevitably the whole thing's gonna gonna come off the rail. So it's a gospel mindset of generosity and humility, but also the asymmetry. So Terry will say, look, I don't know how long my role is to be a catalyst to help get this church plant up and running. And whether I'm helping you do that for five years or seven years or whatever, my role will be over one day and you guys need to go and take this and develop it beyond, beyond me. And maybe I'll do the same thing with another young church planter in the city. And I just think that is thrilling to have that mindset. And that seems to be the way it's working in Birmingham amongst all the internationals coming in. That's how they see their role. And um, they're not coming in to say, I want to plant a church and I want to be the lead guy, but I want to help see a healthy gospel church planted. And I want to work and serve alongside the indigenous local leader who will see it for, for the future. Yeah. Well, Neil actually took majority of my little points, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> As far as, so I accept you, of course, Neil, Neil is so good. He's so eloquent as far as that. I just have like bullet points and he, he's able just to think on his feet and just um, to make those sound so good. Yeah, I think when it comes down to it is um, sometimes Americans come in thinking we have all the answers and that maybe because we have more educational backgrounds than some of the people we work with. But we need to come in and just realize we need to be a lifelong learner and that we need to be a servant in the church plant. And the humility is so important that I'm not the guy who's up front, that um, I'm the guy who is supporting others. And the importance of seeing the of nationals who understand the culture and the idea of helping to equip them and to release them into ministry. Um, because the way visas are and just life is, I don't know how long any of us have in our 
our respective countries. Um, and so it's important to invest in the Christians here to encourage them um, and then release them into ministry. And the only other thing I was going to throw in there is just the importance of focusing on what God is doing, um, what he's done in the past and what he's currently doing, and then expectation of what he's going to do. That's important to take time to celebrate and not think about all the different areas that's not happening or how things aren't working, but just celebrating, hey, um, how much we've, uh, how God has blessed in certain ways. It's not necessarily numerically, um, but just what is happening in the growth um, in the church plant. That's really, really helpful. Thank you guys so much for taking your time out today and sharing with us um, about what a gospel partnership looks like even between two people, uh, not only between two churches uh, or two organizations, but, but really on a, a relational level. And we're really excited always to hear about Birmingham and what God is doing there. So thank you so much for your time and for your partnership and the way that you're inspiring us. I want to thank you guys so much and thank you for, for all of your time. Sure. Thank you.